In this video, we're going to look into the program called Fuel UCS S Spice um, to simulate an electrical circuit. Um, so the motivation for using this program or say LT Spice is that this program runs natively on Linux. And yeah, that's why I'll be using it in this case. The program is slightly tricky getting uh, to actually sim simulate Spice models. Uh, which is why I made this video basically. Um, so let's start with the ba basics and look into how to actually install this program. Um, so basically this is the website of the application. And just as a note, uh, they actually have uh, a link here to their documentation, which do contain a lot of information, but is a bit hard to read. Um, Anyways, if you look into the installation, uh, the far easiest way to install this program is just to uh, download the app image uh, from GitHub. They have a link on, uh, uh, on the website. And if you just save this file, you basically get an executable file that you can just execute. Uh, so after downloading it, I have saved it to my uh, apps folder. Uh, you can uh, make it executable, oops, and then you can simply launch the application um, like this. There is one trick though, which is that uh, in order to simulate uh, SPICE models, uh, we need to install MG SPICE ourselves to our system. So in case you use Ubuntu, you just run sudo apt install ng spice um, and then it will basically install it for you in this case i have already installed it uh, all right when you have done that you can go ahead and launch the application and then there's one thing you need to do before you can actually start simulating with ng spice um, and that's going to the simulation tab and then select the default simulator because by default it uses its it uses its, its own simulator that doesn't support uh, the SPICE format. So what you do is that you go in here, select NG SPICE, and then you apply your changes. Uh, and then you're basically ready. Uh, you need to restart your application after doing this as well. Um, cool. So to demo how to actually uh, use SPICE models in, in QUSCS, um, I'm going to just make a very simple circuit uh, using a voltage regulator, regulating like a 10 volt uh, input to a 3.3 volt uh, output. So to do that, I'm going to use this um, TL431 component from Texas Instruments. Uh, and I'm just going to use it in, in this standard configuration as you see here in the data sheet. Um, so I will actually just go ahead and build up this um, this circuit in in uh, QUSCS. Um, cool. Uh, so now we have our uh, basic schematic. So we basically have the, this is the configuration from the data sheet. Of course, we are still missing our voltage regulator because we need to insert it with the SPICE model. Uh, and then up here, we just simulate a load that draws a different amount of current uh, over the simulation. Um, and we are basically doing a transient sim simulation, which is just a component you add in. And we are simulating 10 milliseconds and we are sending some process sets that's three milliseconds last into seven milliseconds uh, uh, of, of current raw on our load. Um, so we basically have uh, two uh, voltmeters in our um, in our simulation as well which we will then be able to read out but we need to actually put in our voltage regulator before we can do anything and to do that uh, we go to the Texas Instruments uh, website for this component and we go ahead and wrap this SPICE model. Um, 
and we just downloaded it. This is a zip file, and then if we open it, we basically get a text file for this component. So if we look into what is inside uh, this text file, it's basically just like a textual spice uh, definition of this one. So probably the easiest way to use this in QUSCS uh, is to use the, the component here called a spice snip list. This is basically a generic sort of uh, component that allows us to specify any spice model in uh, as a parameter. So in this case, right, we take our um, fact, we take our voltage regulator model, and then we basically specify from the um, from the spice model which um, modes do we need basically and in our case we need uh, all three we can basically see here that number one is the reference number two anode and number three cathode all right so we can go in here we can click okay we also get a reference pin which i'm actually not quite sure on what it's used for but we just leave it unconnected in our case <coughs> sorry so what we want to do is that uh, number one is our reference pin, so that should go to uh, this voltage divider. Number two was our, let's see, was our anode, so that should go to uh, ground, so that's this one. And number three should then go up to our output. So basically, let's just rotate this uh, like this, and then let's flip it around the wall then I think we're in a pretty good spot here. One thing you can notice here that's actually quite important when making this, especially when we go ahead and make a symbol, is that right now these connections doesn't snap to the grid. So if I try making a connection now from this guy to this guy, like see I, I can't, it's not, it's not snapping in. Uh, so what you need to make sure you do is either you take the component, right click and then set on grid, Otherwise, you can just place Control U, and then it basically snaps it to the grid, uh, so it's easy to make the connections. Um, so we set, uh, so pin one to um, reference, cathode pin three to our uh, output line, and then we basically just connect this guy to ground. So this is just a connection from the uh, from the sample application in, in the data sheet. Cool. And now we actually have our voltage reference set up. Um, the disadvantage of doing it this way obviously is that um, like the symbol here is not very nice. And also, if you want to use this component in multiple places, right, we basically need to go ahead and set this up for every single one. And it becomes very non-apparent what this thing basically does. Uh, we can make this a bit nicer by moving this component text so we can at least see the file name of the, uh, of the component. But still, like it, it would be nicer with a simple. Anyways, this should work. So let's go ahead and test it. The way we do that, is that we go to uh, simulation, we simulate, it succeeded, so that's good. And now it will basically open this empty page where we can have our results of the simulation. So right now we don't have anything because we need to build up what we want. So we can take uh, an ordinary plot, put it in here. And then under the data sets uh, section, we can see that in our regulator project, we basically have uh, these three uh, data sets from the MG spy simulation. So we have the voltage output and we have the voltage reference. So let's just add both of them to, uh, to our plot. Um, and then if we apply, click OK. We can basically see, actually, let's just make it a bit nicer by saying x axis is our time, y axis is our uh, voltage. And then let's just say it goes from 
0 to 3.5 and a half steps. And if we go ahead and have a look at this, yeah, this is the result of our simulation. So we can see basically our reference there is at 2 and, two and a half volts, volts, which is sort of expected. And then also um, we see that the output is flat at 3.3 volts, which is what we expect as well, even when we start drawing current right around here and end around here. All right, so this basically did as we wanted it to. Um, but now let's go ahead and figure out how to uh, do a better job in the case of where we want a nicer symbol here and want to reuse the component. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And let's just like clean up a bit of these ones. So first of all, we need to make our symbol. And the easiest way to do that is to go into um, our schematics and basically create a new one. Uh, we will call this one um, TL431, uh, uh, basically our component name. And in here, we will just start drawing the uh, like the uh, the components, so we know it has three pins. So let's start by inserting those. We call them one, two, and three. All right. Then what we do is that we right click and we then we do edit circuit symbol, which is why we can draw the symbol. So it gives us a box as a default. But what we want is to uh, Change this so we instead get something nicer. So let's see, pin one was our reference, so we want to place it up, up here. And again, be very careful to snap it to the grid when you rotate, otherwise, it's going to be a very bad time for you trying to use, actually use the component in your schematic. <clears throat> okay, next up, let's uh, check the pins again. One is the reference, two is the anode and three is the cathode. So if we go back and let's swap these two around. This make sure it's aligned, it is. So that's good. And then I'm just going to make a, a very rough drawing here. So the way you do that is that if under your components tab now, you basically have tools of drawing stuff. Uh, so we will just go ahead and basically make something that looks like a center diode here. So just click around to make it look hopefully nice. This is a bit more. Let's just make it a tiny bit nicer. So if we just like to take it here, so this one is a bit more nice. This is a bit discussion. Uh, okay, let's draw the lines in again. Let's move to that one. That one to that one. We need to draw the center. It's like simple here. So that's like this. And then we just need this reference in connected. So we do it. This way. Um, one thing uh, we could make nicer here is that uh, usually the lines here, at least for the components in, uh, like the standard components, they're basically blue and then they're a bit thicker. So, one really know a better way of doing this apart from editing it directly in the XML later, but when you don't have too many lines, let's just go ahead and actually fix it here. All right, now we have our uh, component created, or so, sorry, symbol created. So the next step is to go to, uh, like to actually like use this one as a library in our schematic. So the way this is done in QUCS is that um, if you go to your home folder, then there's a, a, a folder called .QUCS. 
if we go into this one, we have some folders based on our projects, basically. One thing you can do is that you can create a new directory called user underscore lib, which is used by QUCS to have like, custom libraries. I need to spell correctly. And then the format that the file should be in, in here is that we should have a library file first for the spice model of the component. So if we copy it in here, but instead of having the mod extension, it needs to be a lib extension, otherwise it won't be recognized. So let's go ahead and change it to that name. And then in order to set up the symbol, how we need to do is that we need to have a folder called the same as our components. And in this folder, we need to have the XML specification of this symbol. And the easiest way to do this, uh, so this file also needs to be called tl4431.sim. And we just drew it in the program, but we need the XML file from it. So the easiest way of doing that is to go to this one, go to the projects uh, file, and then we open our schematic from uh, like that we just saved with the component drawing. In this one, we have a section called symbol, and we just copy this entire section and paste it into our, uh, our new file. So after doing this, what we have is that we have the spice model in our in the root of the user lib directory with the .lib extension. Then we have a directory for the same as the component. And then inside this directory, we have the symbol file, uh, which is the XML. After doing this, we can just go back to QUCS. And now if you go to libraries and hit manage libraries, we will basically see that we have our new component here. And if we just drag and drop this into the uh, schematic, we basically have a component. One thing that's slightly annoying is that if you're not careful in the drawing as I wasn't, then basically this uh, component information text up here, it, it sort of stands like far away from the component, but it's relatively easy afterward to just uh, right click and move component text. So control K to actually take it and then move it down here. It makes more sense. Um, so what's left is for us to get this one connected. So we rotate it, make sure it's snapped to the grid. Uh, and then we basically just connect it as we want it to be like this and then it's just these two we need to connect so let's just delete this one and delete this one and we connect this wire again from the ground to the anode let's save it and then we should be able to now rerun our simulation so simulate simulate and after doing this we get exactly the same result which, uh, although not that exciting, I guess, is still exactly what we would expect uh, from this uh, circuit. So this basically marks the end of this video. So I hope you found it useful. And in case you have any suggestions or comments, leave them uh, down in the YouTube comment field. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye bye.